With the Knicks win over the Chicago Bulls in Game 82, they have clinched the second seed in the Eastern Conference, and they have 50 wins on the season. The first time since 2012-2013, the New York Knicks have won 50 games in a season. In today's video, we're going to break down, potentially, who the Knicks will play in Round 1. It's either going to be Miami or Philadelphia as they are going to square off in the play-in tournament. We also are going to take a look at the entire Eastern Conference. We'll go through the Knicks' path that they will have to take if they want to get to the NBA Finals. And we also have some injury updates on OG and OB and Mitchell Robinson. But first, if you are proud of the Knicks, the two seed, 50 wins, hit that thumbs up icon for me right now. You're watching Knicks Now by Chat Sports. I am your host, Marshall Green. Appreciate everybody for tuning in. If you haven't yet, hit that thumbs up icon. I'm proud of the Knicks. I know you are. And this is the most fun I have had in a regular season watching this team play basketball. 2012-2013 was cool, but I legitimately feel like the New York Knicks cannot just get to the Eastern Conference Finals, but win the East and represent them in the NBA Finals. But it's going to start in round one as you are going to square off against the winner of the Miami Heat and the Philadelphia 76ers who are set to square off in the play-in tournament. So this is what the Eastern Conference looks like right now. The Boston Celtics, they have earned the number one seat. The Knicks, they are number two. Milwaukee, number three. The Cleveland Cavaliers in number four. Orlando in number five. Indiana in the sixth spot. And then the play-in tournament. The winner of Philly and Miami gets the seventh seed. The loser of that plays the winner of Chicago in the Atlanta Hawks. Right now, the Philadelphia 76ers are favored by five points over the Miami Heat going into the game this Wednesday at 7 p.m. Eastern time. It is going to be in Philadelphia. So... That is what that is going to look like. And here is what the bracket looks like for the Eastern Conference. As you see, the Knicks will play the winner of 7-8. and eight. Then they get to play them in a seven-game series. If you win that series, or whoever wins that series, the Knicks will end up, or he or Sixers, whoever wins that series, it's going to be the Knicks, will play the winner of Milwaukee and Indiana. The winner of that series would then play the winner of whoever the winner is between the Celtics and the 8th seed and the Wizards or the uh, Orlando Magic and the Cleveland Cavaliers. So, if you win the first round, you're going to be playing either the Bucks or Indy, and then after that, you get to potentially play the Boston Celtics or if a team like the Magic or Cavs or maybe the Bulls or the Hawks or the Heat or Sixers could knock them off. But we are focused in on Wednesday's matchup. Philly versus Miami. My question to all the real ones is this. If you had to choose, not saying you're scared of one or the other, which team would you rather play in round one, seven-game series, have home court advantage? Is it Philly? Is it Miami? Type PHI if you'd rather play the Sixers, or MIA if you would rather play the Miami Heat. For me, it can go a couple of different ways. Neither team will be an easy out for the New York Knicks. They are both going to be extremely hard. Look, you got the two seed, and you may have to play the second best team in the East outside of the Knicks, in my opinion, the Philadelphia 76ers, and then a team led by Jimmy Butler, Bam Adebayo, and Eric Spolster. Let's start with the Philadelphia 76ers. I'll share my thoughts on them first. Really good basketball team. Really scrappy. Have a really good team. But they are a great basketball team when Joel Embiid is on the court. This year, in the 39 games that Embiid did play, the Philadelphia 76ers were 31 and eight. He was going to win his second MVP, averaging 34.7 points per game, 11 rebounds, over five and a half assists, and scoring on 52.9% from the field. He is one of the best in the business. I believe the second best center in this league and a top five player. There's a reason he was an MVP last year, and there's a reason the Philadelphia 76ers were 31 and eight with him. He is dealing, I guess, with a little bit of an injury. Did not play in game 82. I would say that is more so just injury management from Philadelphia and Nick Nurse. Some other injuries that Philly is dealing with. DeAnthony Melton, a back issue. Robert Covington, a knee issue. And KJ Martin, a toe. So no real serious injuries. 
But as we know, Embiid, injury-prone player. He has missed games in the playoffs, seems like, every single year. But he's fresh, he is back, and if he's healthy, it is going to be very, very tough for the New York Knicks to try to slow him down. On the flip side, the Miami Heat. They may be the eighth seed. They say what you want about them. The Heat have been here, and they have done that. And any time you got to face off against this three-headed monster of Spolstra and Jimmy and Bam, it is going to be tough. And I actually think they have not as top-heavy as a roster as Philadelphia, but maybe they can go deeper with guys like Hero and Jaime Jaquez and a new guy like Terry Rozier. Martin had a great playoff series last year. Duncan Robinson is a really good player. They are not going to be easy. Neither of these teams are going to be easy, and they both have two really good duos. Jimmy Butler and Bam, they were great this season when they did play. Did not play in all that many games. Butler just 59 overall, but we know that Jimmy Butler likes to take his game to another level when the lights are shining the brightest. And I don't know if the Heat have like a little bit of mind powers over the Knicks, but I do respect them, and I know that they did beat us in the playoffs last year, and I'm sure the Knicks players and coaches did not forget that. Then you got Embiid and Maxi. Maxi had his best year in the NBA. He is just scratching the surface of the type of player he can be. Averaged 26 points this year on great efficiency, and you got the guy that was going to win back-to-back -back MVPs in Joe Embiid. Neither will be easy. You will need to play your A game for multiple games. They will probably both go six and seven games in the series. But you know what? I got the Knicks. We don't have to play them. They have to play us. We, in my opinion, are the big dogs in this situation. Subscribe to the channel, turn on your notifications, and join us this Wednesday as we're going to be going live on the channel for a watch party as Miami travels to Philly to play the Sixers so we can do a little bit of scouting and then get an up-close personal look at this team to find out who the Knicks are going to match, uh, match up with in round one of the playoffs. Coming up around the corner, Got to talk a little bit of injury news. Nothing I'm too worried about when it comes to OG and Mitchell Robinson, but we got to talk about it. Also got to talk about our proud sponsor, Prize Picks. Go to prizepicks.com slash CLNS. Use that promo code CLNS, and Prize Picks will match your first deposit up to $100. Prize Picks is the number one daily fantasy sports app in the game. It's daily fantasy sports made easy. All you do is create a lineup of two to six players, and you simply choose more or less on their projected stat line. Win big money, withdraw your winnings, pick more, pick less. Now is the time to get hooked up with Price Picks. Do it. PricePicks.com slash CLNS, promo code CLNS, as the NBA playoffs are here. There are going to be NBA games for what seems like every single day for the next couple of months. And now is the time for you to get hooked up. Support the show, support the sponsor. I kindly ask you to create a Price Picks account and use our promo code. We'd love having them as a sponsor. We want to keep them around, but we need your help. Prizepicks.com slash CLNS, promo code CLNS. Let's close the show talking some injury news. Fred Katz of the Athletics said Tom Thibodeau on OG and an OB limping a bit at the end of the game. Quote, Tibbs, everyone has a little limp. If you're playing hard, you got something. I mean, Jesus. Tom, you can't do that when you play Dante DiVincenzo 52 minutes in game 82 of the regular season. Um, and with OG and Anobi, I think it is more than fair for any Knicks fan or beat reporter to ask questions about him and his injuries and his health. I will say this. If OG and Anobi has to miss any time in the playoffs, which I am not expecting at all, that is not what I am saying. I'm just saying, if OG and Anobi is not healthy and unable to play, the Knicks are going to be in a lot of trouble. I will also say this. If OG and Anobi is healthy and he's able to play every game, and he's played at the level that he has the last five games, the rest of the NBA is in a lot of trouble. I think in two months, we're going to look back and the overall conception and or overall thoughts of OG from non-Knicks fans is going to change. People talk about him as a role player. I talk about him as a star player because he's the best wing defender in this league and he shoots 40% from three. He is a game wrecker and against a team like Miami, you're going to need him to guard Jimmy Butler down the stretch. And even against a team like Philly, don't be surprised if he guards Embiid a little bit or if he's the help defender on Embiid while also at times guarding Tyrese Maxey. 
The injury I am a little bit concerned about is Mitchell Robinson. Cats of the Athletic, check, check him out. Athletic, excuse me, check him out. Does great work. Said this. Tom Thibodeau said Mitchell Robinson was unavailable in the second half of the game tonight. Said he was just told by the medical staff, by the medical team, Robinson was unavailable. That's not good news in my opinion. Knicks do have a week off. We're recording this video on Sunday, April 14th. Knicks don't play again until the earliest, April 20th. But Mitch needs to be healthy, especially if you're going to play the Philadelphia 76ers. He's really big against Miami as well, as they do have Bam Adebayo, and they are a tough and rugged team, and having another guy that can dominate the glass and protect the rim will be big. You need him out there. I don't know what the injury is. I don't know what's going on. But hopefully we can get closer and closer to being back to 100% as we do return to action on April 20th. This is your lineup. This is your roster for the playoffs. Jalen Brunson, Dante DiVincenzo, OG Ananobi, Josh Hart, and Isaiah Hartenstein with Miles McBride, Alec Burks, Boyan Bogdanovich, Presh Tachua, and Mitchell Robinson. Simple as this, if the New York Knicks want to do things that they have not done since 2000 or have not done since 1973, they need Jalen Brunson to do what he has done in the last 17 games. And that has averaged more than 35 points per game on seven and a half times, almost four rebounds, and shoot 49% from the field and 39% from three. This is the time for Jalen Brunson to somehow take his game to another level. I don't know how he does that, but the Knicks are going to need that if they want to go to the conference finals or be dancing in June when the songs stop. Jalen Brunson, you got to do it. Because you did this. You had the Knicks to the second seat and 50 wins for the first time since 2012-2013 with Pablo Prigioni, Jason Kidd, Carmelo Anthony, J.R. Smith, Marcus Camby, Rasheed Wallace, and that fun team. The real Knicks team. First time. First time you're a two seat in 11 years. And enjoy it. Enjoy it. We've done a lot of losing. And man, you're the second seed in the Eastern Conference. You got home court advantage in round one. And if you get there, you get there in round two and you have home court advantage. I'm proud of this Knicks team. I love this Knicks team. 16 more though. 16 more wins. That's what we're looking for. Hit that thumbs up icon because I know you're proud of the Knicks. And give me a follow on social media at Marshall Green underscore on Twitter as well as at Marshall Green underscore on Instagram. I'm going to be tweeting. I'm going to be posting about the Knicks all day, everything, every day as Patrick Seatman has gone to sleep on this video, trying to close it out to get him to push the graphic across. Appreciate you guys. Hopefully he wakes up and he's ready to rock and roll for the playoffs. Let's go Knicks. 16 more. 16 more.